sit down. <laughs> uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, traveling across the country is absolutely amazing to be able to see all the people that are still loving America and loving patriotism and loving freedom. Let me tell you, there is good news. Uh, we had our first uh, CSPOA, Constitutional Sheriff and Peace Officer Association Convention in Las Vegas on January 30th. We had about a 90, uh, 90 sheriffs from all across the country from 32 different states represented. And let me tell you, if you had been there, <clears throat> you would have ex expected to bump into any of the founding fathers at any time. Mm. You could feel the presence of freedom. You could feel the presence of American idealism in the room. The sheriffs were very engaged. We had county commissioners. We had deputies. We had sheriff candidates. We had chief deputies and under sheriffs and 90 sheriffs from across the country who wanted to learn about our history. All of that movement was born out of a book that I wrote three years ago called The County Sheriff, America's Last Hope. Let me tell you, this is taking hold, my dear friends. Uh, none of you should be without this book, okay? Every American home should have this book in it. And was this written to sheriffs? No. It was written to the sheriff's boss. You. Okay. And you, you have to know what he's supposed to know. You have to know what he's supposed to know. And that's what that is. Okay. And there's probably another most valuable tool that you can get. And it's just, you know, your pocket constitution and... The Victory for State Sovereignty, which you'll notice it has every state flag on it. This is a case that two small town sheriffs took all the way to the United States Supreme Court and won. Okay? This is the highlight of that case. You think that if, if there was ever a case that restored the Tenth Amendment and the, the principles of freedom and, and state sovereignty, do you think you'd want to see that case? Yes. And that you might want to give it to your county commissioners mm -hmm. so that they know the principle that uh, I, I quote uh, James Madison in this book. We can safely rely on the disposition of state legislatures to erect barriers against the encroachments of the national authority. There's a lot more than stinking judges you don't need. Okay? You don't need the EPA coming in and running your land. The U.S. Supreme Court said the EPA was ruled to be unconstitutional in the early 1970s, and it's in this case. Just look at this case. It's page 12. I believe it's page 12. It's not page 12. It's page 11, and it goes over to 12. Okay. Absolutely get that. And then, why are we still believing in freedom? Obviously... You wouldn't be here today if you didn't. And I'm going to tell you why you do. Even though there might be uh, the destruction of freedom all around us, and there is, I still believe that we can take America back peacefully, sheriff by sheriff, county by county, and state by state. If any of you still believe that there's hope in Washington, D.C. to restore God-given American liberty, then I've got beachfront property for you in Omaha. Okay? And I say that as a candidate for United States Congress. I'm running for Congress in Texas. Now, what Bolin said about needing cash, <laughs> Take that to the 10th power, because that's what I need. However, I am not going to, even if I were elected, which a lot of you have told me, we sure hope you don't get elected because we want you to keep doing what you're doing. I am not going to stop what I am doing. You know, Ron Paul has Campaign for Liberty. I will have Constitutional Sheriff Association. Okay? The state sovereignty movement that I am a part of, I am not going to back away from that. Now, I am really afraid... Hang on just a second. Yes, dear. I'm speaking to a crowd of about 400 people. 
<laughs> okay, I'll I'll tell him you. I'll tell him. I'll, I'll tell him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. She says she loves all of you and that she wants to make sure you make sure I have lunch today. <laughs> all right. I actually answered that uh, because I have a radio interview at 11 o'clock and uh, my wife was reminding me of that interview, so I have to, I have to go really quick here. Um, is there hope? I'm here to tell you, I wish that every one of you would have been at that Constitutional Sheriff meeting. You would have left there so invigorated, so encouraged, so animated that the holy cause of liberty that we're all involved with today is real, it's tangible, it's reachable, and we're going to do this, my dear friends. We're going to have hundreds of sheriffs standing against the incursions of the federal government. That's a word that Justice Scalia uses in this case. Standing against the incursions of the federal government. I, there, there are so many stories about sheriffs right now. I've got to tell you uh, about at least one of them. His name is Sheriff Brad Rogers. He's not too awfully far from here. Elkhart County, uh, Indiana. Okay? And people have asked me, where should I move? I'll, uh, I'll tell you what. If I, if I was in a position of having to move, there would be maybe three counties I would choose. One of them would be Grant County, Oregon. Elkhart County, Indiana would probably be the first one on the list in the Midwest or in, anywhere close to here. Let me tell you what he did. He actually, at our Constitutional Sheriff Convention, he was one of our speakers. He also received the uh, CSPOA Interposer of the Year. Do you want to be an interposer? Yeah. We were just talking about this. Uh, interposing on behalf of the people, even if it's against federal law, even if it's against federal authorities, even if it's against the FBI, or, or even the worst organization on the face of the planet, the IRS. How are we going to protect ourselves? Is anyone in Washington, D.C. protecting you from these horrible agencies? Nope. These agencies now, my dear friends, believe that their bureaucratic policies supersede your right to pursuit of happiness. They also believe that their policies and regulations supersede the Bill of Rights. They believe it. And judges are backing them on that. And so, what do we do? Well, I, I compare what's going on today to Rosa Parks. Now to me, and, and people have said, oh, well, the Rosa Parks thing was staged. I don't care. This is an amazing historical event that even the liberals are, are on our side of. They believe that she shouldn't have gone to jail. I say the same thing. We should have never heard of Rosa Parks. But this is such an amazing story that helps us. Because this is what happened on December 1st, 1955. A black woman in Montgomery, Alabama refused to obey the law. Isn't that wonderful? This is what happened. She refused to give her seat to a white man. That wasn't just a tradition. It was the law. She could have been lynched for this. And instead, she sat firm. And the bus driver gets in her face, and then she tells him to get lost. He gets off the bus, doesn't have a cell phone. <laughs> and he had to get off, he had to use the payphone out on the street. And he called the sheriff's office. And a couple of deputies show up, handcuff her, take her to jail, fingerprint her, take her picture, and put her in a jail cell. She was later bailed, bailed out. In America, 1955. What should have happened that day? She was hauled off to jail by two people who swore in God's name that they would uphold, defend, protect, and preserve the United States Constitution. Yet she went to jail anyway. Today, I want you to ask, and, and this book asks the question, the magic of gun control. 
You see, it has to be magic. That's the only way it can work today. If it's magic, and all the other things are magicians. In fact, I made up a new word for this book. Poly magician. You know what that is. Those illusionists in Washington, D.C. that want you to believe that they have political magic. It's magic because everything that has failed in the past, they'll make it work today. You just got to believe in them and follow them. And if you do, you'll help destroy America as well. We are the generation, my dear friends, who are going to decide if we're going to continue to watch the destruction of our Constitution and our country or if we're going to stand and take it back. That's right. Again, I will not be part of anything that is a violent overthrow of our government. I believe, without any question now, that the solution at hand, called state sovereignty and local autonomy, that we can take this back effectively and peacefully. If you get your sheriffs involved in this process, we will win. Thanks.